Tell me a little bit about your first impressions of Jaleel. Uh, wow. It didn't take long to realize that Jaleel would be the best defensive player I've ever had. My goodness, wow, what a big play right here. He's gonna go, he's got one man to beat, he's gonna go all the way to the end zone. 75 yards, pick six for a touchdown. Jaleel Johnson has been making plays for them all year when they needed it most, that was unreal. Wow. He's a fly little kid. You know, came to the field, you know, with the waves and had his own little uh, swag with him, you know. Um, so I peeped that out first, right? And then once he got on the field, we had the evaluation phase, 40s, you know, all the athletic drills. And um, I remember I used to hear his father, uh, Jeff, say, burn out, burn out. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, about this burnout, right? And then... I seen the little the little youngin like take off, right? And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, okay, that's what the burning out means, right? Um then I, I started gradually looking at little other little certain things that he was doing, right? And it wasn't so much as far as the skill standpoint, right? It was more how his body was able to do certain things within the skill work that really caught my eye. I was like, damn. Little young and pretty special, you know what I mean? Like the way that he was able to just stop, change direction, the way his hips opened up, um, you know, and swiveled, you know, to allow him to do that. The physical attributes that take years to be able to have, he had it at seven. There was a time that he, uh, um, this was funny though, but I, I Ja, this was funny, man. Um, he got he got hit. We were running Oklahoma's, and he got smacked pretty good. And he says, and any any fusses, right? He's seven years old. Stephanie, his mom comes over. You know, he's crying. She checks on him. She says, "What happened?" He says, "It's his finger." So I'm like, "All right, let me check your finger out." So he's like, my back. And I said, is it your finger or is it your back? Then he reaches for his leg. And I'm like, Ja, is it your, is it your finger, your back, your leg? What is it? He was like, everything. And he was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm not playing football. It was his very first year. And I was like, oh, no, no, you're going to play. And he was like, no, I'm not. I said, yes, you are. Let's call your dad. Because, you know, here I'm thinking like, you're not going to tell your dad you're going to quit. And he was like, okay. I was like, oh, all right. He's pulling my car, so I called Jeff. I'm like, he, he wants to quit. He was like, what you mean? I said, he got hit, and it was a stinger, and now he wants to quit. Jeff's like, put him on the phone. Being overprotective, you know, I was concerned. Not so much about him having a stinger, but I didn't know the dudes who were coaching him. I'm a, you know, I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a father in real time. So, you know, if my kid gets hurt, I don't like it. It's not a good thing for me. It's not like, oh, it's like, nah, well, what happened and who did it? You know what I mean? And he knows that. 
So he, I didn't press him on the phone. I didn't go, well, you got to keep playing. I didn't say any of that. What I said to him was, we'll talk about it when you get home. See what I'm saying? I knew he, I knew I wasn't going to allow him to quit, but I needed to make sure of everything that I needed to make myself comfortable. Now, my wife was there. She understood the situation. She understood the scenario. It wasn't any threats happening. So she was like, yo, you know, you're going full throttle. So she loves to tell that story about how she was the hero and she made him, you know, she, she, he forged through because of her, you know what I mean? So she's, but she's right. She was mean. And again, I don't know what happened, like what Jeff said to him, but he was like, no, I don't want to play. And Jeff told him, we'll talk about it when you get home. And he was like, I, I, Ma, I don't want to play. I was like, oh, you're playing. I don't care what you do after this year, but what you will do is finish this year. We pushed him as parents, like you're going to fight through it, right? Like you have to fight through it again in within reason, right? Like, but you're going to fight through it and it's nothing wrong with that. This is what happens in football. Like people get hit. You know, and one of the things that his coach used to always ask them, are you hurt or are you injured? Because it's a difference. Are you hurt or are you injured? So anytime they would get hurt or they laid down a little too long, are you hurt or are you injured? And I think he learned very early, like, okay, am I hurt or am I injured? Like at, you know, like six and seven years old. And it's like, if you're not injured, you can still play. You know, kind of like you said, like most would be like, I can run to mommy and I'm, I'm probably not the mother. <laughs> that you can run to and cry because I'm like, no, like we're not doing that, not today. They had their communication as far as mom, dad, Jalil. He got back on the field and we worked through it. But how we worked through it was me busting his ass. I want to play a clip and he's, he's talking about um, after that. The moment that you guys shared, I think, it was after practice. Mm. It was you and him, but this is, this is the clip. I mean, we just took the whole practice, me and him. It was one-on-one. -on -one. I lined up in front of him. He lined up in the backfield. And it was, let's go. And he met the ground quite a bit, you know, that practice. Um, got off the field, sweaty, muddy, dirty. Um, first couple of times he was frustrated. Again, more mental than physical. Um, and I mean, we went at it. We went at it. We went at it. And I just told him, I'm not going to let you fail. You're going to get to learn yourself more about yourself than you even know. And we went to work. I learned shit. Both of us learned that day. I learned things about myself I, and, and he learned things about himself. From there, he grew. Like, and what I mean by that is the impact, understanding how to run hard, how to, to give them the business instead of receiving it, um, started taking place at that moment, uh, after that practice. That's when Jalil really started beginning to introduce himself to the world. Thanks. Tell me, tell me, tell me about that hour and a half. <laughs> it was long. It was, it was very, it was long. Like, I, I remember wanting to give up. And he was like, I'm not going nowhere, so I'm, I'm going to be right here. And it's going to just be me and you. And it was every time, every, every time. Like, I was actually trying, like, to hit him. But I'm, I'm yay high, yay big, so. I'm getting put on my back and on my butt. My, I'm noticing that. I'm, I'm like withstanding his hits and he's showing me that it's nothing. Like, this is nothing. Like, you're going to get hit. Like, it's a, that's what football is. I was really ready to not play football anymore. But he showed me that. If you could take hits from a grown man, you could take hits from these little, little young pups out here. I knew he was showing me something. Like, showing me that I'm stronger than what I was. child's brain and development on deciding on what or who they are gonna be, you know, pretty much is decided by the age of nine. Um, some of their innocence is taken earlier than that. Um, 
their ability to determine what's right and wrong. Um, you know, all those type of things. But, you know, with a strong backing, a strong family, and, and an introduction to certain things, you know, sky's the limit. Jalil is one of those those uh, those products of that, you know. Not saying that, you know, his family and himself never experienced any hard times, because we all do, but but they understood the structure, the the the, the main foundation, the uh, principles that was and morals that was that was given uh, to them. Uh, and then, like I said, I, you know, me, I just uh, just a uh, a blessing to be part of it, an opportunity to be part of, you know, taking what uh, Jeff and Stephanie created and then bringing him to realizing what was birthed into him. That's why, I, other than the fact that I had the blessing to be able to coach Jalil, me and his father, you know, uh, have had the opportunity to grow as, as brothers in spirit, you know, and, and certain aspects of guidance, um, you know, because he go through things, he get frustrated, you know, he ready ready to do things, you know. Um, sometimes I'm like that, you know, but we lean on each other every now and again um, in conversation and in prayer. And, yeah, it's, 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 it's a blessing. Coach Zoe, and I want to go on record with this, right? So Coach Zoe truthfully was the best starting coach my son could have had because we share a similar thought process you know what i mean so he was able to catch my son in a very vulnerable space and give him jewels wisdom and encouragement the same way that i would give it to him the same dialogue maybe not the same verbiage but the same tenacity that same love that same compassion and it resonated with my son and i can see it we had like a a, a downpour you know i, I want to say it was um it was i don't know if it was a hurricane or, or what it was right but there was a certain point in time we had a like a lot of rain that came through so for i want to say like a week maybe two weeks practice was was very you know dismal so to speak and uh so i had to come up with something for the kids are we going to let nature make an excuse for us or are we going to get to it our coaches was like they they on us like at an early age too like we were seven and eight and it was making us do all these suicides Air crawls. We practiced in the, in the pouring rain one time. It was a bunch of teams. They all left, and we stayed seven and eight year olds out there bear crawling in the pouring rain, crying. It was crazy. I didn't know how for real he was until we played Brockport, our first game of the season. Um, Jalil literally, is, I think, his second carry of the game. Took the ball right up the middle, and he straight out ran this kid completely over. Hit him, Judge. Nice. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, man. Like, just this drive came out of him. It was just like, we got us one. Like, this, this kid's going to be good. He grew a little bit, got a little bit more muscle. Talking to his dad a lot, I think a lot of that came from his dad. His dad is just like, with what he does, he's so driven in what he does. Uh, another funny story with that is that same Brockport game. Jalil had to come out. He was, it was hot that day. He was cramping. He was throwing up. And, you know, most parents, you know, we're, we're letting him do his thing. And most parents are kind of just like, all right, do you feel okay? You need some Gatorade? You need some water? His dad came down and was like, you done? Jalil kind of gave him a thumbs up. And he said, all right, now get back out there. You're good. It's not even necessarily that moment. It's just how we are. Weakness is a choice, man. That's a choice. You know what I mean? But if you're choosing to be weak, then you're wasting my time. Once again, you could look at it as being selfish, but I know what type of person you are. I know what type of player you are. I know what God has given you. I know what God has told me about you. So when it comes to 
that particular game, he was just, um, I think he had eight the wrong thing coming into that game. My only, I had this little small thought in the back of my mind because we had just gotten there, you know what I mean? So I didn't know what transpired um, before we got there. But when I did see him throwing up, my thing was, you know, are you finished? You know, get it out your system, get back in the game and let them see what you're really capable of. Because like I said, it was the first game of his second season on JV. Now, his first season, he only played in like the last four games and he didn't even really get a chance to play. But his film was dynamite. Like if you look at his film from the four games he played on JV, I mean, he was running hard, he was hitting hard, but he was still learning how to play, you know, on JV. But that particular game, you know, I wanted him to showcase what he truly um, was made of. You know what I mean? So my thing was like, yo, you know, you got it out your system. Okay, get back in the game, you know what I'm saying, and bust their ass. My JV year I played, I didn't really play offense that much my ninth grade year because they, they didn't know what I could do, and they already had like a running back that was coming back from his freshman year, and he was playing his sophomore year, so he's going to play running back again. So I really I played linebacker, but I also didn't get in that much because they, they necessarily didn't know, they didn't know what I could do. So I had to like, like show out in practice and tackle their star running back. So I, I earned my stripes, but like I was coming, like I was you know, the new kid on the block. So they didn't necessarily know me. So, and then my sophomore year, I was like, I know, I, I know I'm gonna be the man. Like my coach already told me like the last game of the season, my ninth grade year, he told me, he was like, we're gonna need you next year. I'm like, okay. So I came back my sophomore year and took over. And that was that, and it was easy. He was one of my better defensive guys, but he was also our best offensive guy. So when I saw him go to Aquinas, my first question was like, how is he going to fit into a program that already is already rolling? They, Aquinas has been Aquinas for, <laughs> I mean, years, you know. So when he got there and I saw him excelling on defense, it was like, okay, you know what I mean? He must have talked to a coach. A coach must have let him know that we like you on defense, and then he took it and ran with it. So his, his, his sky's the limit there. I, I think at Albany it's going to be nice because, you know, just because he's young doesn't mean he won't play. They, you know, young players play, you know, quick at Albany. Um, so I can't wait to see it. I, I really can't wait to see, you know, him put on that purple and gold, which I can't believe you're putting on that purple and gold because you know how we feel about East, but it's Albany. So don't worry. Don't worry about it. Um, um, but, yeah, for sure, I think sky's the limit for sure for him. When he walked in the door, it was like, wow, that's a dude right there. He has a great frame. He's 6'2", 6'3". I mean, he's grown since the first time he walked in the door. But, I mean, you could see that he's, you know, athletic and, and, and you know, he had good length and everything else. Intangible-wise, I mean, he brings a very calm demeanor to everything that he's doing. He never... Uh, he never really gets too high and he never really gets too low. Everything is nice, even keel. Um, doesn't get flustered by much. Um, that's, that's huge when you're talking about a 17, 18 year old kid in a pressure situation, um, you know, he doesn't bat an eye at it. I'm not really like a pregame type dude. Like I don't need much to wake me up or like I don't need no big pregame speech or anything. Like most kids need that, they need motivation, but putting on a helmet and them shoulder pads is all the motivation I need. And stepping on the field, that's all the motivation I need. Once the whistle blow and the game start, I'm ready to go. And that's it, it's, it's game time after that. He also has the kind of talent that you can't keep off the field. That being said, you know, we, we would try and spell him on offense because he was too valuable on defense. Um, but, uh, you know, offensively, he has that kind of playmaking ability. You know, he's at, at 6'3", he can go up and get a ball. He wasn't afraid to go across the middle and catch the ball in traffic. You know, and when he got the ball in his hands, he's tough to bring down. He was tough to deal with. You know, so that's as far as playing on offense. The things that he did, though, that were really special were defensively, um, you know, we, we said that he did whatever we asked him to do. I'm sure when we kind of adjusted our defense,
and we had him, you know, on the line of scrimmage directly across from a tight end. I'm sure he was like, what the hell am I doing here? You know, but, you know, he bought in and, and did it and he did a fantastic job. You know what I mean? And, you know, then when teams found him, they tried to go away from him and we had to move him to where he can get to where he's going to be able to make plays. You know, and our defensive staff did a great job with that. There's nothing he doesn't do well. I mean, he, he rushes the passer well. He obviously tackles well. He drops into coverage well. He catches the ball well. You know, he's, he really doesn't have, from a defensive standpoint, he has no weaknesses. He's a good leader. He's an intelligent kid. He's very coachable. Again, we asked him to do a lot. I mean, he was calling out formations. He would call out coverages. He would have to, like I said, he'd be rushing the passer one play, dropping into coverage the next play. Blitzing the next play, lining up somewhere else the other play. I mean, there's nothing, obviously he has to get stronger, put some weight on, but if I'm a D1 coach, my, my estimation is Jaleel will be a safety of some kind. A lot of colleges now are going to three safety looks. Whether it's a free, strong, or a monster rolled up look, he could do any of the three. I, I think Jaleel's better at the first or second level more than he would be back at the third level. I think he's more where he's more involved, like almost like a backer type up on the line of scrimmage or, or at a backer depth. But I could see Jaleel in two years at 6'3", 215, running a 4-whatever, four 4'5", four 4-something, four and jumping out of the gym. I don't see, barring injuries, God bless, I don't think academics will be a problem, and the coach is not screwing up. I don't see how he's not a star at Albany. I'll give it time. Let's, let's say three years for sure, maybe two. Give him time to get there, get acclimated, get bigger. He's got to get bigger. But... I don't think there's any limit to what Julio can do. I really don't. Oh, I mean, he has a fantastic motor. I mean, he's he, you know he he wants to make plays. He wants to be great, and that's the that's what inspires him to go out and give 150 percent every time he goes. You know, he he has the desire to make plays and the desire to be great. Um, the fact that he's such an instinctual football player and an instinctual defensive player um, is just bonus for him. You know, I mean, it gets him to where he's got to go faster because he can process it faster and he can see what's going on faster. All of those intangibles, all of those qualities, you know, turn him into the football player that he is. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's getting his education for free. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of schools down the road that when they see how his career turns out, they're going to go, what the hell were we thinking? when he was coming out of high school. And I just have a sneaking suspicion that there's going to be a lot of teams, a lot of schools that are going to feel that way. You know, but right now, Albany gets the prize. It was a little different pressure for me when I met Jalil. When Jalil and Jeff walked in, Jeff is a longtime friend of mine. You know, we grew up together, so he brought his son to me. You know, that's his, that's his son. The different kind of pressure was because, you know, now I got to really put on because Jalil checks all the boxes. He checks all the boxes for a division one player. I felt like it was up to me to make it happen. You know, um, I took on that pressure. Jalil was going to do what he had to do on his end as far as the work in the classroom. Um, he had to go out there and make the plays on the field. I had to get him prepared for it. I had to teach him the game you know, at a high level. I had to get him to play at a high level. Um, and I had to get him to have the mindset of, that he's the best player on the field at all times. And so when they walked in the door, I was like, oh man, it's on, you know what I mean? And we worked, we worked and worked. And we got to the point to where Jalil was ready to go out, out there and spread his wings. And that's exactly what he did. He went out there, he dominated uh, on the field. Um, he, he took what we talked about. He took what he learned. He took everything from, from reading keys on the defensive side of the ball to physically dominating people. So he did his job. We, we worked, we did our job, and he is where he is now. Ja, uh, first time I met him, he walked through the door. And he wasn't as big as he is now, but he was still kind of big. You like, let's get a sophomore? Sheesh, you would think he was like a, a junior going to the senior year, but. He was fresh in the beginning of his sophomore year. I'm like, oh, then I saw his tape. <laughs> and that's what did it for me. Mo pulled up a highlight of him 
playing quarterback, but took a run and ran through 30 kids, and it's only 11 on the field at the time, and scored a touchdown. I'm like, oh, yeah, this kid the real deal. Then we got him in the gym, and when I seen his work ethic, that, that, that to me solidified it that this kid, he going somewhere because Jalil going to outwork whoever. I'll challenge anybody to get in the gym, in the field. He is going to work and give you 150% effort every time. So my first impression of him was just like, this kid's a dog, and if we give him an opportunity, he's going to go out there and take it. Jalil is a very, very smart kid. He, he anticipates very well. He anticipates faster than everybody on the field. And that's a, a big key that everybody don't, doesn't have. A lot of people don't have the anticipation factor. Um, and then he flies. He, he sees, he believes what he sees and he goes. And he's a physical kid. I mean, he's going he's gonna to hit you and hit you and hit you. And, you know, he covers a lot of ground because of his size. So he, he has, like I said, he checks all the boxes. And... His best natural ability is to read and react. And that's what it takes at the next level to, to be successful. As a student athlete, Jalil received numerous recognitions. He's an honor roll student, maintaining at least a 3.0 GPA, and an early recognition Urban League Black Scholar based on his dedication in the classroom. For his hard work and dedication on the football field, he was awarded five-time Defensive Player of the Week, the Joseph Award for the Defensive MVP in the Aquinas McQuaid game, Class AA Sectional Championship, Most Outstanding Defensive Player, Section 5 Class AA Defensive Player of the Year, First Team all Gray Roster, Second Team All-State. He recorded the following stats for his senior season. 113 total tackles, 86 solo, solo tackles, 16 tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks, one interception, one interception for a 75 yard uh, touchdown, three cause fumbles, 18 quarterback hurries, one fumble recovery, two block punts, six passes defended, five offensive touchdowns. And when I first met him, when he came into my office for the first time, you know, he made it clear. I thought this was an outstanding way to start off. He said, you know, I loved my teammates, my coaches, uh, really everything about where I came from, no complaints. I'm here because I want the challenges as a student. And I thought that was really refreshing. So let's welcome up. Yeah, I would first uh, like to start off by thanking God. Uh, without him, none of this would be possible. Uh, I want to thank my family, my friends, uh, my trainer, Mo Jackson, uh, Primetime 585, my coaches, and um, everyone that helped me through the recruiting process. Um, yeah, thank you. Go Danes! Blessed to, to say I found a home, man. Going to school for free is, you can't beat that. So it's a great feeling. It's a, it's a beautiful feeling. Really blessed. So, Pops, how you feel, man? Listen, man, let me explain it to you like this, right? <laughs> Hold on. Let me tell you something. Because there's a lot of people out there who are asking me how I feel. And this is what I want you to understand. It's not necessarily about how I feel. It's all about how he feels. There are kids across this country getting pushed into programs that they don't want to be a part of. You have to allow the child to do the best thing for them. He made his decision, he busted his behind, and he paid for his own college education. How I feel, I feel like I did a hell of a job along with my wife. That's how I feel. <laughs> And he practiced, and I'll never forget, it was probably maybe a week later, two weeks later, he got hit. And his helmet, Jalil's, is so funny. When he was little, his, his helmets never fit right. Like, so they always looked like they were too big. And he got hit, and the helmet hit 
across the bridge of his nose. And we were walking in the store and he walked past the mirror. And again, he is bright. You know, he had this purple bruise across his nose and he looked at himself and he was like, Ma, I'm in the game now. And I was like, okay, you in the game. And from then on, it was like, he's good. He's, he's a football player now. <laughs> like, he was really a football player. We are proud of you. We are proud of the journey that you're getting ready to um, embark on. We just want you to live in it. Lean into it, lean into anything that's this, that's uncomfortable um, and go with it. Like we're just excited. We're excited for you. We're excited to see you at the next level. And we know that this is just one step into this bright future that you have. So congratulations. I love you. And I love you. And you're welcome. <laughs> For everything. Even the jokes. Now that's it. See, <laughs> cut that right there. That everything is how it is. And that's final. <laughs>